Welcome to the Hydroponics Nutrients Masterclass. In this video, we're gonna talk everything nutrients. You're gonna leave with no questions unanswered. You're gonna know everything you need to know about your hydroponics nutrients. And if you want further education and more help, then check out the School of Hydroponics Live and Evolving Community. I'll link it up in the description box or you can just click this card right here. All right, so let's get right into nutrients. So there are really three different types of nutrients that I wanna talk about, and then we're gonna talk about organic versus synthetic, and then we're gonna talk about what types of plants for what nutrients, we're gonna go over everything. So first I wanna talk about the three different stages. So there's a one-stage nutrient, there's a two-stage nutrient solution, and then there's a three-stage nutrient solution. And then it actually goes even beyond the three-stage, and we'll get a little bit into that. Let's start with a one-part, one-stage, we'll say, uh, we'll call it parts, one part nutrient solution. So that means that this nutrient solution just has everything in it, your full NPK, which is nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And it's also gonna have your micronutrients as well as your um, calcium, magnesium, your other macronutrients that aren't within your NPK. Everything's gonna be in this one part nutrient solution. So you actually would just increase your EC, your electrical conductivity, or your uh, TDS, your total dissolved solids. You would just increase the amount of nutrients as your plants grow. Really, these are great for plants that don't have different nutrient requirements as they get larger. Your lettuce, your herbs, um, even some carciferous greens do a really good job with these one-part nutrient solutions. The plants that don't do a good job with, an, with a one-part solution are flowering plants. So plants that require a shift in the nutrients as they grow up and as they start to flower, those just won't do well with a one-part nutrient solution. And here's why. When we're filling out our EC, now, if you don't know about EC, watch this video, it's how to measure your nutrients. So when we're filling out the total amount of nutrients, we have a number that we're trying to reach. We'll say it's 2.0 for your EC. Now with a one part nutrient solution, it just has everything mixed completely evenly. I mean, not evenly, but it has everything mixed really to optimize the vegetative stage. So if we're just increasing the amount of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium during the flowering stage when the plant doesn't really need nitrogen anymore, we're, we're filling out that 2.0 EC with a lot of um, nutrients that the plant's not gonna use and doesn't need. So if we wanna be optimal hydroponic gardeners and really giving our plants exactly what they need, not leaving excess nutrients. And not only that, but a nitrogen, um, an abundance of nitrogen can really make weird things happen. Your leaves start turning really dark green and getting wet. There's an overproduction of chlorophyll that happens. So that's what really can start to happen when you use a one part solution for your flowering plants, because you end up giving them way more nitrogen than they ever needed. Um, and sometimes you can give them less potassium, less phosphorus than they really need to be making their fruit. So that brings me to a two part nutrient solution. So there are two different types of two part nutrient solutions. There's the tower garden style, which is where you just mix an A and a B together to basically just make a one part solution and then you just increase the volume of that throughout the grow. Or there's the vegetative and the flowering two stage. And that would have your nutrients for your vegetative growth and then your nutrients for your flowering. And that's two separate nutrients. Now, obviously, in my opinion, I think having the vegetative and the flowering nutrients separate is much more beneficial uh, because you can give your plant exactly what it needs during the vegetative stage and then if it's going to go into flowering you can give it what it needs during the flowering stage if you have plants like lettuce i call them forever veg plants that never go into flowering or at least you don't want them to go into flowering your herbs your lettuce stuff that you go pick the leaves from you can just give them the first part of the two-part nutrient solution. So you would just leave the bloom solution or the flowering solution up on a shelf and just give them the first bottle that's designed for the vegetative growth. So now we're getting into more catering to our plants' needs as they're growing. The reason I stay away from tower garden nutrients is because they're, while they are a two-part nutrient solution, what you do is you just mix those two parts together in your tower garden and you raise both those parts evenly throughout the growth. They aren't designed so that one part has what your plant needs for veg and one part has what your plant needs for flower. They're just two separate nutrients. It's really more like your micronutrients and your macronutrients. And you just mix those together 
and you raise the total EC rather than adjusting the nutrients like you would in a, a solution that's designed for veg and flour. Which brings me to what I use personally, General Hydroponics three-part nutrient solution. I use their Flora series. Now a three-part nutrient solution is far superior to anything we've discussed so far because you have one bottle that's just for vegetative growth that contains more nitrogen and more potassium. Then you have one bottle that's going to contain just your micronutrients. And then you have another bottle that's for the bloom stage. So when your plants are in flowering, you give it the potassium and the phosphorus that it needs in that last bottle. So if you follow the feed charts for your flowering plants with general hydroponics, then you'll see that you get told exactly what to put in. I have a, I have a video right here if you're really interested in the general hydroponics three-part. This explains the three-part solution a lot more and how to use it. Um, but basically, you know, based on what we've gone over so far, you can already see that what we do is we get to cater the nutrients that our plant needs during different specific times of its growth, you know, way more specifically and way more um, custom and optimized. So when they're starting off, um, we're going to give them a lot more of the vegetative formula, and we always give them the same amount of the um, the micros. Not the same amount, we raise the amount, but we always give them sort of the same ratio of the micros. Uh, so they're always going to need their micro solution. And then as the plant goes into flowering, we give them more of the bloom and less of the veg. So that's how a three-part solution works. So now let's talk about synthetic nutrients versus organic nutrients. Now I am a total hippie at heart. All my food that I get is organic. Everything I try to do, I try to do as natural and organic, as close to nature, as less processed, as less synthesized as possible. Everything except for my motor oil for my car. The reason you want synthetic motor oil is because it's cleaner. There's no mess in there that needed to be filtered out and filtered again and filtered again. There's nothing extra that your engine's gonna be burning. Synthetic oil is just pure and clean. And that's actually the same thing for synthetic nutrients. So let's talk synthetic nutrients and then we'll talk organic nutrients. Synthetic nutrients are um, General Hydroponics Flora Series. They are synthetic nutrient blend. These are made from nutrient salts. So the nutrient salt is just the trace element and it's broken down to a nutrient salt that dissolves in water very quickly and is immediately available to your plants. So using a synthetic nutrient is really hydroponics at its maximum it's the best because what you're doing is taking advantage of the fact that the that the roots are always going to have the nutrient availability right there in the water um, and with synthetic nutrients you're making sure those nutrients are unlocked available water soluble right there right now for your plants to uptake this means your plants are getting exactly what they need when they need it now the other thing is once your plant goes through the osmosis process and absorbs the water and the nutrients through the roots and is moving it through the actual plant through transpiration and respiration. Um, it really doesn't know, the plant has, you know, it's not gonna do any different. It's not gonna grow anything any different because the element that it ended up with is organic or not. Basically, once the plant strips away everything organic around the actual element, it only needs to use the nutrient itself and it doesn't really consider the source. In fact, let's talk about organic now. Organic nutrients actually make it much more difficult for the plant to get to the actual nutrient itself. The nutrient itself actually has to be unlocked uh, in some sort of biological functioning within the organic nutrients. This means that not all the nutrients are going to be immediately available as soon as you put them in your hydroponic garden. Some would say that using organic nutrients and hydroponics is more like bioponics, not necessarily hydroponics, because it's kind of like just taking a handful of dirt and putting it in your garden and then knowing, oh yeah, all the, all the nutrients are in there, they'll eventually get to the plant. But it causes a lot of problems with nutrient um, releasing. So not all your nutrients, like I just said, are going to be readily available in the water. Things have to happen before your nutrients are even unlocked in uh, organic nutrient compounds. This creates so many problems that I have to deal with all the time, helping people when we look at their garden and we just cannot figure out what's going on. Their EC is fine, their pH fine, everything is set fine, their water level's great, they're using their filtered water. Everything is just as it should be, but something weird is happening to their plants that always shows up as a nutrient deficiency. 
aside from organic nutrients not being immediately available for your plants, uh, they're also typically a thicker compound, which means they're going to have a harder time going through like um, a pump or if you're doing a low pressure or high pressure aeroponic system and they have to go through spray heads, you could run into a lot of clogs using organic nutrients. Now, more and more they become more water soluble, but that doesn't change the breakdown ratio and that doesn't change the fact that there still are um, really just chunks of organic nutrient in the water rather than dissolving in the water. They're kind of just floating around and releasing the nutrients um, on their own accord. <laughs> Now, stepping beyond the one, two, or three-part nutrient solution, we can step into four, five, six-part nutrient solutions because there are ways that we can customize and cater to our plants' needs beyond just giving them the normal uh, nutrients that they're going to need. Like Some plants are going to require more calcium and magnesium, so then we can step into a four-part solution where we're also including calcium and magnesium. I include silica to strengthen my plants, to... Uh, the indoor gardens see a lot of heat, so silica helps to keep the heat out. It helps to keep bugs away from my plants, so that right there makes it a, a five-part nutrient solution. And then whenever it gets to the bloom stage, I also use a bloom booster, which is just going to be like 10% phosphorus and 10% potassium, and I cut back on my uh, bloom formula that is in the normal three-part solution. So that actually makes it a six-part solution. Then I also add food grade hydrogen peroxide to my tank every four days. I had 15 milliliters per gallon of 3% hydrogen peroxide. I guess that makes it a seven part nutrient solution. So you can really build upon your nutrients depending on how far you wanna go, how much you wouldn't cater to your plants and optimize their growth because with hydroponics, the nutrients are one part that we have that complete control over and the nutrients are one part that make hydroponics just so much more superior to any other method of growing. So if you can optimize your nutrients and your plants needs at every given time, then you're going to see growth like you've never seen before. So if that sounds like something you're into, I have plenty of people that can personally attest to that over at the School of Hydroponics community. So head over there, start your seven day trial, ask all the questions you can. I just did a live Q&A yesterday, so that one's up for you to view. I'll see you over at the School of Hydroponics and let's grow together. Thank you.